Hi guys, it's Tatiana and Australian Schools School of Australia. And my next guest is the third interview with uh, our lovely mums is Anya. And Anya has a very special story to tell us. It's about career change, um, very dramatic change, which involves not studying, but having a skill set that was thought after by the employer. Hi, Anya. Nice to meet you. And I hope you're doing well where you are in the world at the moment. You guys are not in lockdown, right? You are, you are free. Uh, hi, Tatiana. We are in another lockdown, six lockdown. We're lucky to live in Melbourne, best city in the world used to be. <laughs> okay, well, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> we're going to bore everybody if we're going to talk lockdowns. So let's talk about you. So if you could tell me briefly about your initial uh, training. Uh, it happened in Russia, I, I believe. And yeah, then yeah. what happened since then? So... It's, when I was 16, I knew 100% who I want to be. I wanted to be a psychologist. I wanted to help kids at schools, disadvantaged kids, uh, perform consultations. So all the sorts of I knew that's going to be my career. So I um, graduated from school, took the exams where uh, which helped me to uh, pass the university tests. Um, I was studying for nearly like four years. On the fourth year, I realized that's not the career I can be successful at. I was taking everything too personally. I knew I'm going to be in stress for the rest of my life. So I channeled it a little bit and I worked for five years as a HR consultant recruiter in the various um, Russian companies in Siberia. So that, that was the beginning of my career. At, um, I knew I enjoy analysis, um, and we'll talk about this later. Um, and for the last few years of my career, I was um, in the project uh, of the software development. We wanted to um, do the assessment for personnel for internal personnel, I was an assessment manager. So with HR department, we were building software to perform the assessment, like um, uh, all the documentations, where it goes, who approves, all the questions people uh, need to answer about each other. So it, it was built in house for a few years and I was a sort of lead of the project at that time. And then the first child happened and the maternity leave. And the biggest um, change in our life, we moved to Australia. Um, I didn't speak English. Uh, like, hello, how are you? That My name is Anya, that probably <laughs> was it. Um, so I was thinking, what can I do here in English speaking country without spending years of learning English? And um, another thing, um, in HR, I believe you need to feel people. You need to feel the culture. You need to feel the mentality. So you would know how well this candidate would fit this position in this company. And I didn't feel the uh, people in Australia. That it's completely different mindset. They're completely different or were completely different uh, 13 years ago when we arrived here. So um, I thought, I don't want to, continue with HR because it's like I, I lost this feeling of, of the people, this interaction with people. And English was a big barrier because it's like, oh, I couldn't speak. So, and language is the main skill and main instrument in being successful in HR career. So um, the, at that point, the easiest way to get into non-language industry was the being tester in um, uh, IT. So IT is focused on analytics, focused on numbers, um, structured language commands, but not this speaking English and not so much interacting with others. So, um, and test, being tester, you pretty much don't need to um, 
have any specific technical skill. All you need is common sense and being lucky to get the errors in the system. And I'm very lucky, even if the er uh, system has few errors, I will get them, <laughs> so I will catch them. So what I started doing, um, I found a few books, um, uh, some documentations online. There are lots of resources online at the moment. And because my English wasn't so great, I read the book firstly in Russian and understood everything about it. So uh, at the end, I was fluent. So I knew the theory behind testing. And then I read the same book in English. And that's how I picked the, all the terms and, uh, and improved language as well. Uh, at, in parallel, I was working on the food court just to pick up the English. Again, there was the option to go into TAFE for some courses and spend few um, months or a year with non-English speaking people mm. <laughs> trying to learn English, but I choose the, uh, to be around people who speak English well to pick up English. So my uh, job on a food court was like a English student, which helped yeah. a lot. And in parallel, I was reading book and uh, books and um, learning uh, how to test software because it was the easiest um, uh, easiest path. Um, then uh, I realized that the having only common sense is not enough. The, there are few technical skills which might be helpful. So I started looking at the SQL, so working with the databases. And at the same time, I had the interview in, in BI company as a software tester. Oh, another thing, which I think is very important, uh, when you look at your career and your past career at your skills, you look at it from one angle. And sometimes you need to um, like step back and look from another angle. And what I discovered that I actually last few years of my career in the HR department, I was business analyst 90% of the time and software tester. So when I learn what this business analyst and software uh, 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 is, that's what I was doing. So I could say in my resume, I have a year and a half experience of software testing without lying or anything because it's like I uh, developed the requirements for the software tool and I was testing it from end to end and logging in bugs and uh, uh, giving feedback to uh, IT department. So, and that's what I could talk about in the interview and having the um, some knowledge um, from the books, I could sort of channel it to the terms specific to the industry. Um, I wasn't successful on the interview uh, as a tester. They hired more experienced person. They hired someone with five years experience and I had a year and a half. But what they offered me is the role of sort of, it's not a graduate, but it's, it was a very entry-level position as a BI consultant. So they said, are oh, you already learning SQL? You um, interested in uh, software itself? Um, they offered me a position as a consultant and they said, we will teach you, we will train you for half a year. And after that, you will be a consultant. So Anya, if I can just interrupt, would that be the same position that somebody out of uni would apply for and be hired? Is it that sort of level we're talking about? Uh, um, I, I think when you are out of uni and if you have specifically learned um, some um, information technology subjects, you will be more suited than I was. Oh. Okay. Uh, abs absolutely. So um, I was focused on uh, only on the common uh, sense and um, manual testing, because with manual testing, you just go through the scenarios and you click, 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 and you find where the system is not working. Um, when we're talking about BI, there are lots of different subjects in uni right now. Um, it's um, knowing SQL. There are lots of um, an business analysts. Um, courses, data scientists. So um, yeah, 
I think the person graduating from the uni, to be honest, will be more successful, but, or maybe it will take the person uh, just a um, short amount of, shorter amount of time to learn everything and level up themselves. But uh, absolutely, yes, it was an entry level position. Um, they just, uh, I was lucky instead of going to university and uh, learning there, theory i was learning like i was um it was 100 percent hands yeah. off yes mm. so i was given the um task they wanted to build data warehouse internally for the company itself so they can perform analysis on their performance how their employees are go, uh, doing how their um, Mm, finances a channel so all this sort of stuff and they thought they can teach me and they can get internal um, analysis easily so that that's what happened another important thing happened to me in parallel is I had a mentor so it's not like out of blue I became BI developer I had a mentor with 20 years experience in the field so who I can talk anytime so I would just pick up the phone I have this problem I can't merge these data sets what do I do or mm -hmm. I can't write this SQL so I know syntax but I can't put it it together so he helped me a lot he was training me a lot and yeah that's where it was very efficient because I channeled my study to I, I studied very specific field um, in the life scenario so at the end the company did have data warehouse in the parallel they started sending me to the clients and I ended up in a big client uh, realestate.com and spent there a few years so that so um, to summarize this story and just draw a bit of a um, theory into it you've mentioned a few quite interesting things so the first one that comes across is obviously focusing not on the job title in your resume and trying to describe a to the title is focusing on the skill set that you have developed in the job regardless of what it's called yeah. and then transferring the skill set across to potentially different industry and the other thing that you have done is you've very purposefully identified the niche that you could be good at and by doing some study and uh, it's, it's impressive that you are like a self-taught <laughs> oh. uh, analyst. So you niched down, studied, and you've also uh, uh, had help from a mentor, which I believe everybody should have one, regardless of the industry, somebody who could guide you along the way, who's been there. And mm -hmm. what you've mentioned, um, which I quite enjoyed, and that's, uh, because as you know, I'm studying career counseling at the moment, and there's a theory that's called dialogical self. That is when a person writes a career autobiography and looks at their own career from a different perspective, like it's another person reading it. And that's what you did. Um, and that's how it helped you to transfer your skill set, which is amazing. Oh, it sounds very amazing. It was very painful. Don't get oh, no. me wrong. <laughs> I, at some point, I had a feeling that my brain was taking out of the head, turned around and put back. So this turning, like, and looking from the different angle was very challenging. Mm. So, Anya, if I were to ask you, like you working now in, in the industry, you probably come across people who are just fresh out of university. Yeah. Yes. So if you could just tell us, because we, we'd like teenagers and their parents to have a better understanding of the industry. So what degrees do they study to, to work in this industry? And what hard and soft, well, not so much hard skills because they'd be self-explanatory, but more what kind of soft skills would uh, be um, essential to be successful in the industry. So the degrees, the universities that they um, come from and the soft skills. Um, it depends on the role because BI is very broad. It's very uh, big um, niche. You can, you can take any um, direction. One is the organizing the backend. So business intelligence is have, is to help people to understand the data 
understand the trends, understand what, what's happening with the company. Um, and one, one part of the job is to organize the data. You can have a multiple transactions. Let's say you go to calls and you buy 55 items, all the different product types, all the different um, uh, prices, sales. But uh, in order to uh, make it make sense of the data, you need to structure the data on the back in a certain way. And some people enjoy doing that. Another part of the job is to present the data, to make the numbers talk, to make the numbers success, to be consumed successfully by the human brain. And I choose to be on the front end. So I take the already structured, organized data and um, deliver to the business in the meaningful way. So business can look at the few graphs and see where the product is going, where the opportunities are, what the performance in the past was. So there are two different you know, um, uh, paths you can go. So to be able to, um, to success on the front end, you need to know how to structure the data and that's where I discovered my psychological background <laughs> comes helpful because it's a uh, human brain operates in a certain way and like how we scan the page and so on. So how do you organize the charts, what kind of charts you would pick to present this or uh, this scenario or another scenario. Um, and actually taking about, uh, talking about university, um, we have a, a guy uh, in the company for uh, he graduated from monash university he was the um part of graduate program we did some time ago when we hired data scientists um at the last year or i i i don't know exact details but i know the guys from um monash uh, from data science team joined us and uh, and he successfully. Uh, so you, you wouldn't remember how many applicants um, were? No, I wasn't a program. part of the process. It, and mm. it was in a uh, different department. So we have a data science department. But what he mentioned that um, the dashboard building, the presentations, uh, data presentation is actually taught by a psycho professor oh. of psychology. So that's where it clicked finally. And when I start, I stopped being ashamed of my <laughs> degree in psychology. Well, I you know what? It. Psychology, <laughs> surprisingly, uh, when people ask uh, about psychology, when we go and look at the units, there's a lot of numeracy in psychology. People uh, don't realize that you actually have to be good at math to do psychology. Yes, that's, uh, that's true. So, um, so there are two parts. If you enjoy inter like human brain interaction, or oh, sorry, and interaction with the business, um, I have a lot of meetings. I have a lot of requirements gathering. Uh, in some big companies, that's the business analyst work. But what I discovered, I still would know better how to channel requirements in the right way. So business not fun, uh, having fantasies about these amazing dashboards we will have. And I look at them later and they don't make sense at all in terms of the data. So I would get the requirements, run the workshops. I try to uh, understand what business wants and help them understand what business wants because 90% of the time they, uh, even if they have, um, nice written few words, I want to know performance about A and B and C products. They, they, they don't understand what it means. It looks nice in the business terms, but it doesn't look nice in the numbers. You can't produce numbers based on the requirements. So channel the business requirements and um, getting the requirements out of the business, helping them to understand what they want is the part of the job I enjoy the most. Mm. And then getting back and building what they need and presenting them and um, making sure the information is used in the right way and information is what will solve their problem. That, that's what I do. And uh, some guys 
like building the tables and um, so organizing the backend. And that's that's another big niche where you need to know how to interact with the queries, how to interact with the data, how to get the data out of different sources, optimizing the data run. So it's, it's all another area. And I realized I would rather be more successful in the front end on the back end. Mm. And, and to be honest, I haven't seen developers who would be great in both areas. Mm. It's either one or another. Um, for example, my mentor, he enjoys backend. He thinks of himself as he's an architect building the beautiful palaces of the data. And it's a, it's a, I'm very, it, it's very creative work. Mm. Um, and, and, and it's another way of uh, finding yourself in the, in the BI industry. So you can be very um, mm. technical or you yep. can be very people uh, oriented yeah mm. so um i had a question in mind I, now it's gone okay i'll get to the question so with the with the job what would you say ah yes i remembered it you know how you say those guys those guys you're referring guys in general or you're referring the male um it um, <laughs> is the male uh that's what I wanted to ask. So how many of you, um, how many females in the office? What's the percentage uh, of your share? Uh, I'm in the male dominated industry. It's CFS. It's the ex captains, ship captains. We deal with ships. We um, build the system who predicted the incidents on the ships. And now it's the performance of the ship. So we're dealing with the data, we're dealing with lots of ships and there are lots of um, males in the office. Yes. So uh, if a 17 year old female who is about to graduate from school is seeking a career in the industry, what oh, advice would you give go her? For what it. are the challenges? Go for it because uh, now company try to balance uh, and I was in a situation when we were hiring, there was a choice between uh, absolutely equal candidates. Mm. And because the industry is so luck with the um, females, they chose female because mm. it's um, uh, just to balance guys. And to be honest, uh, in our department, there are on two reporting uh, developers, they both go. <laughs> Right. So what are the challenges about the job that you could uh, tell us about? Or maybe there is a myth that people think, oh, it's like that. But in reality, it's something else. Because young people, you know, they, they've got their ideas from what they see here, but haven't really stepped their foot in the industry. So what would be the biggest myth or maybe the and the challenge? Um, in industry, uh it's maybe not understanding what bi actually does people think oh we will business think we will get this expensive shiny tool and it will solve all our problems uh it's not rubbish in rubbish out if you don't get the nice data in you won't get the um proper analysis out and sometimes it needs to be told to the business they it needs to be said it's like doesn't matter how expensive the tool is or how fancy the report is, if you don't provide the foundation, it's not gonna work. So, and sometimes business needs to be pushed back. Sometimes their requirements controversial and um, they, they need to know about that. Um, for the graduates, uh, we, we touch on that as well. You don't need to be, you don't need to graduate from information technology specifically mm -hmm. to, be, to be able to enter this and to be okay. able to success in this field. I know the stories where um, the girl who was the um, accountant, she is good with numbers, but it's still, it's a different industry she's very successful bi developer she's amazing one of the best so uh, she didn't study any in, uh, it courses mm. again self thought self 
taught, but um, it, it, it is possible if you're interested in something. There are courses, if you're not confident that you can do it, there are courses in, let's say Power BI is now one of the most um, wanted tool in the market. It's okay. for free for it, it's for free for anyone who has Microsoft product. Mm -hmm. Install it on your machine. There are tons of videos online. You don't need to pay a cent to be able to produce beautiful visualization. There are lots of books about how to make your visualization uh, understandable. So just if you're interested, just go online and pretty much. So your company would consider hiring somebody who just knows stuff, not necessarily has a degree in the stuff in, in the field. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, that, that's very yes. useful information uh, because uh, what uh, you know what I'm trying to project with my project, <laughs> uh, Wordy, but um, is the skill-driven employment, yeah. not so much the degree-driven. Some yeah. industries, yes, of course, they need a degree because it's part of their um, qualification. You have to, you know, medicine, you yeah. do. But some, it's a skill set that drives the industry. Well, Anya, that was actually very interesting. And I love the part that how you implemented your psychology, the study of psychology into something completely different. I think psychology is a very versatile degree. You can pretty much stick it anywhere because you work with people and for people, uh, yeah. very useful tool. So all, all of those years of study, they're not in vain, finally. <laughs> they found their avenue here in Australia. And thank you so much for your time. Um, our, our parents and their young people uh, will love to hear about this and maybe uh, even inspired to join the Power BI something something, okay. which I have no idea about, but I will Google it. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. It's a part of Microsoft Stack. It's a program which produces nice charts, uh, bubbles, bars, okay. charts. So it's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, I'll look it up. Um, well, I'll let you go to continue your work slash homeschooling slash everything else you guys do. And I'm, I'm hoping that you're going to be free very soon. Oh, I hope so. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tatiana. Thank you. Yeah.